All right, decent comment here. I always wonder at what oil concentration would effectively eliminate certain cover stocks versus hardness. Will a soft urethane hook versus a dull particle reactive or whatever? Now, I like this comment because it actually gets down to the root of another issue, which is the viscosity of the oils and the amount of oil that has to be put on the lane. So I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, the center I'm at now, Waterford Lanes, they used to have a surface, which was an old Chinese surface. Uh, it was super high friction. Now, the fronts got beat up and the only way to get the ball to get past the fronts and in the past the middle of the lane was to add volume. But we did some testing and we were looking at it. And once you actually added past a certain level amount of volume, your ball wouldn't literally rooster tail, but the amount of oil actually slowed your ball down faster. So we would add oil, we would add an increase in the front, but you would still see massive hook in the middle. Once we decreased a little bit of volume in the front to allow, because that's the highest speed area, once we decreased the volume in the front and just increased it a little bit in the middle, that's where, and not because the middle had less oil already, it was all loaded up in the front. That's where we uh, were finally able to get it to scoot through the front and then get to the back part of the middle before it would really read. So um, there is, no matter what surface you use, there is a amount that would be too much. There would be too much volume on the lane to get your ball to actually react properly. You can make your ball slow down by um, giving it, having too much oil on the lane. Like it's essentially rooster tailing. You're not seeing oil fly up, but it is super thick. Which actually brings me to another point, which is your surface of your bowling ball. You've got to pay attention to that as well. When you're bowling on a higher volume type of pattern, uh, it's not always necessarily best to use a super high or super, I mean, super low surface. So, so like 500, 360 grit type ball to get it started because you don't want it to start in the front. You want it to start in the middle. So using those mid range, you know, 1500, you know, anywhere from a thousand to 2000 is probably your best bet to create the type of reaction you want because you want it to scoot through the front, read the middle and then continue off of it down lane. So that way you're not getting too far down lane um, where you're still in the hook phase or still in the skid phase um, and you don't want it to be using up all its energy in the front. Now, controversially, conversely, right? Is that the right word? I don't know, whatever, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, when you're bowling on a short pattern, lighter volume, the idea is to use more surface on your ball to get it to use up its energy so it doesn't store for the back part of the lane. You don't want it to go crazy down lane. You don't want it to overhook when you get it in and underhook when you get it to the right uh, or, you know, basically overhook and hook stop, essentially. You don't want that. You want controllable, smooth, arkiness on a shorter pattern. So the idea is to use more surface closer to the gutter um, on a shorter pattern. And then sometimes a lot, in a lot of cases, you wanna use less surface closer to the middle of the lane on the longer patterns. You want it to store a little bit, but you still want it to read the middle. Don't get it wrong, don't get me wrong though. On every pattern, you want the pattern to read the middle of the lane. You don't want it to only read the back part of the lane. I know a lot of y'all go into the pro shop and say, I want a ball that skids down lane and flips in the back. That is the worst thing you could ask for. You do not want that. You want a ball that is clean through the front, starts to pick up in the middle, and then makes its movement the rest of the way. But you want it to continue. If you watch your hockey stick and you watch it hook real hard and then stop and go forward, that's when you're gonna leave a lot of wrap tens, flat tens, swish sevens, stuff like that. You want your ball to roll off of it and then just keep going and drive through the pins. That's why I always talk about when you see bowling balls, the best thing you can see is when that ball starts to make its motion, it looks like it speeds up and keeps going to the left. When it looks like it's not actually speeding up, I always have to say that because there's always going to be somebody like Walter Ray coming on. Well, I've done physics and I wrote a paper about this. The ball doesn't actually speed up. No shit. We know that. So <laughs> we actually, we want to make it look like it's speeding up. That's that illusion where it looks like it's changing direction and just gets going. So Pay attention to that stuff. That's all I had. I wanted to comment on that. Very good comment. Thank you for your comment. I'll talk to you guys later.